Welcome to the Noonday Meditation with Wayne Vernon. I invite you to join me over the next few weeks for our family focus. Genesis chapter 37, 3 and 4. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made a rich ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. After reading this text, the question that plagued my mind was, what is it that motivated the virulent sibling rivalry that fueled such intense hate, resulting in conspiracy to murder and ultimately in the dastardly act of human trafficking, concealed by lies, deception, co collusion, corruption, secrecy, pretense and cover-up. How was this secret so securely and expertly guarded for so long without anyone having a reality check, a come to Jesus moment, a moment of conviction and confession, a moment when even one brother would say, I cannot keep this any longer from my hurting father. How on earth did these 11 men of faith evade truth and reconciliation while watching their aged father battle the pain of losing his beloved son in such a perceived horrible and mysterious way? with no sense of closure. I was compelled to circle back a few chapters in order to gain a proper appreciation of the full narrative. Going back to chapter 30 and working my way forward, I, I was reminded that that which manifested itself in the relationship between the brothers existed on both sides of the family, between Jacob and Esau, as well as between Leah and Rachel. This was an embattled family, and from their dysfunctional family life paradigm, Joseph and his brothers learned dysfunctionality among siblings. Having revisited the story, I was immediately reminded of the powerful lyrics of the poem by the late Dorothy Law Note, an American writer and family counselor. The poem is, Children Learn What They Live. This was written in 1924. She wrote for a weekly family column in the Torrance Herald in 1954, and her poem on childbearing or child rearing states, If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns 
to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find love in the world. What a powerful reminder. I pray that over the next few days, we will recognize the powerful lesson for family life from the Joseph narrative and that we will seek to apply them to our lives so that our families may be healthy and whole. Should you need further instructions in these matters, please feel free to text the number 647-696-0422. Should you desire to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please text the word salvation to this number as well. Someone is standing by to support you right now. We want to say thanks to all those who came out and supported us at our book promotion in Jamaica at the New Testament Church of God National Convention, the largest English-speaking gathering of the Church of God in the world. And it was an amazing time of fellowship. Thousands of persons converged on the convention center over the weekend. It was amazing. We look forward to seeing you at the General Assembly if you're going to be there in San Antonio, Texas. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Noonday Meditation with Pastor Wayne Vernon. Please forward this study to your friends, your relatives, associates, neighbors, and all those persons in your social network. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to communicate with us and we will commit to supporting you in prayer. Until we meet again tomorrow, Shalom.